Another good one, folks. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to week number 10 of the Fantasy Life. Man, you know where to find me. DraftKings 4-1 crew. One on DraftKings, the Fantasy Life with AC on YouTube, Fantasy Life with AC on Facebook, and at Trivia with AC. Before we get started with today's show, I just want to do a happy belated Veterans uh, happy belated Veterans Day to all the active and former military out there. More than appreciate all the sacrifices you have made and continue to make uh, for our country. We are, you know, very appreciative of your services. Let's talk business, though. Uh, we had another good one, folks. We had a we didn't quite get the first place, but we we did pretty well. It got a little exciting in the household uh, on Sunday. But let's see what we uh, see what we did this year. Let's do a quick recap of last week. We did have a couple of nice scores. Uh, again, this is that same tournament we played last week. Our fifty dollar chop block, uh, eight hundred entrance in this one. Top one hundred seventy get paid. We got 7th and 6th in this one. We were in 1st and 2nd for a while in this one, actually. Um, this was our Deshaun Watson lineup, and if you look at it, it looks pretty familiar because this is the one we showed on stream. That's right. This is literally the, the one we showed on stream that uh, and it ended up getting 7th. At one point, it was in 1st. It got down, down to 2nd. Uh, Vikings DST turned out pretty good here, but again, stacking Houston every week just doesn't seem to let us down. Every single week. Love it. Uh, and here was our other lineup. Uh, it did slightly better. Uh, if we used a different defense, we would have uh, done better. If we went with the defense I told you to use, the Vikings defense would have been good. But uh, I paid up a little bit. had some extra money. Uh, kind of regret it. Um, went with the Patrick Mahomes lineup. Again, folks, look at that. Travis Kelsey, 6% own. I don't know why people do it. I really don't know why people just don't use him every single week. 6% owned for the clear-cut best tight end in the business. Oh, my goodness. And what did I say about Christian McCaffrey, right? The lowest owned he will be all year long. Less than 6% owned. Drops almost 40 points with Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook was very high, highly owned, 36%. But, man, you got the, him and Christian McCaffrey. You were looking good this week. All right, so we're on to week number 10. Let's see if we can get another... Uh, good week here. We're on a roll, so let's see what we can do. First and foremost, though, we look at the target leaders every single week. Uh, why are targets important? Targets equal opportunities. Opportunities equal points. So let's see what we got over here. Again, top of the list, Stefan Diggs, Keenan Allen, both top two of the week. Two of my favorite plays this week as well. Allen Robinson right earned that. Mark Cooper still on there. He's on by this week, but yeah, he's... He's still on the top of the uh, leaderboards for targets. Uh, the model of consistency, Travis Kelsey underneath that. Bobby A, my guy, still on this list right here. Still getting the targets each and every week. Terry McFly, still getting it done, even with Alex Smith getting it done. We'll see what he can do this week against Detroit. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, again, always going to be on this list every single week. Uh, one of the best receivers in football, if not the best. Alvin Kamara leads all running backs right now with targets. No surprise there. Tyree Kill, another consistent guy that has really stepped up his game this year. This really is his breakout season. Darren Waller underneath that. Kind of a disappointment in the uh, receptions category. Yeah, he has 50. All right. I guess that's pretty good. But 72 targets, that's a number you can't ignore. Cooper Cup, he's a little banged up this week. Uh, but he uh, definitely on this list right now for targets. Definitely a guy Goff has been going to. Tyler Lockett, Devonta Adams, and Optimus Prime right there. DK Metcalf following them. Uh, no surprise to see Seattle two Seattle receivers on this list given how bad their defense has been. Then Calvin Ridley, Tyler Boyd, and CeeDee Lamb rounding it up again. Uh, all these receivers are on defenses that are just really bad. So it does not surprise me there on this list. So... The reason why we show this every week, like I said, targets equal opportunity, opportunity equals points. But if we're really bullish on a matchup, uh, on a guy, and he's on this list, 
Good chance he's going to be in our lineups this week. Let's talk four aces this week, folks. These are my guys that will be in a large majority of my lineups. Um, these guys I fully expect to get a 3 to 4x return based on their salary. And uh, I just have the utmost confidence in each and one of these players. Let's get rolling. Here's uh, number one. My favorite play of the week will be close to 100% of my lineups. Aaron Jones versus Jacksonville, $7,100. We saw what he did last week against San Fran, and he, he really, with his limited touches, limited touches, really had a monster, monster game. Uh, didn't find the end zone, so it didn't quite look like that in the stat column, but he was running with a purpose. The touches he got, he really did great. Uh, fully expect the Packers to get a big lead in this game. Fully expect them to run, run, and run. Next on this list, Mike Davis for $4,000 against Tampa. DraftKings made a boo-boo this week. They made a big boo-boo. They accidentally did not change the price on Mike Davis. If you look on the Thursday to Monday slates and the Sunday uh, early only slates, Mike Davis's price is not $4,000. It is a lot more. So DraftKings made a mistake with uh, Christian McCaffrey not playing. We are loving Mike Davis this week for $4,000. Uh, he will be highly owned, fully acknowledge that. But again, a starting running back, particularly a Carolina Panther starting running back with all those potential uh, receptions out of the backfield, you just can't ignore it. You really just can't. Next on this list, another consistent guy, Slayer, Keenan Allen at Miami this week, $7,100. The guy gets it done every single week. He is Justin Herbert's first look. We say it every week. And every time we use them, we love the results. Keenan Allen right there, $7,100. One of the absolute locks of the week. And defense this week, I like the Giants at home versus uh, versus Philly. Carson Wentz leads the NFL in turnovers right now. Leads the NFL in interceptions. Fully expect the Giants to have a good defensive game against Philly. Um, they've been stepping up these past couple weeks, surprisingly. Giants has been a team we usually pick on. Um, I do accept, uh, expect some of the, you know, the, the running backs and some of the pass catchers in Philly to do okay, um, but I think Carson Wentz is just going to make mistakes because he can't help himself. This is what happens each and every week. Um, all four of these positions total out to be a $20,900 salary. Um, this just gives us tons of options on what we want to do with our lineups, all of our stacking that we want to do this week. So these are my four aces that I'm using, my core four, and they will be in the majority of my lineups. They will open up tons of opportunities for you. Uh, let's go over my five favorite quarterbacks of the week. These are the five quarterbacks I will be stacking. Again, stacking is where you use a quarterback and at least one running back, receiver, tight end, usually more than one in your lineup. Uh, this is organized by salary, not necessarily who I like the most, but uh, all five of these guys, I will admit, are five of the seven most uh, expensive quarterbacks on the slate this week. And usually I suggest, or at least throw in an inexpensive guy, but to me, all these guys just seem to be in smash spots. Top of the list, Kyler Murray, $8,000, most expensive guy the, on the uh, slate this week. Um, this Buffalo Cardinals game has the highest projected point total with a one-point spread. And what does that imply? That implies it's going to be a shootout, back-and-forth game that probably will come down to the last possession. That's, of course, important for us because we want a game that's always going to be relevant, pass-catching-wise, you know, start to finish. So Kyler Murray gets it done on the ground, in the air. Loving him at home this week against Buffalo. Aaron Rodgers at home. This feels a lot like Patrick Mahomes a couple weeks ago. Um, where it's an obvious play and people just aren't going to do it for reasons I don't know why. Um, so Aaron Rodgers is going to be in my lineups. It's going to be very expensive to go him, Aaron Jones, and Adams, but I think there's enough inexpensive options to pull it off. Josh Allen, same reasons why we like Kyler Murray. I actually think Josh Allen is the safer of the two options because he gets so much work on the ground, particularly those goal line carries. He's just When he gets inside the five, it's like his mission to score a touchdown. He's just a monster of a human, too. Um, fully expect Josh Allen and Diggs to just connect this week. Uh, Deshaun Watson, probably my favorite game stack of the week. Again, same reasons why we liked him two weeks in a row. Hit going with him, Cooks, and Fuller just is a really inexpensive stack that hasn't let us down really all year long. So 
Um, they have a great matchup against Cleveland. Monitor the weather there. Make sure it's not too rainy or too windy. Um, but like Deshaun Watson a lot this week against Cleveland. Expect a lot of points in that one. And Justin Herberts as well. The guy hasn't let us down once all year long. The guy has scored 20 or more fantasy points in every single game that he started. The only one where he didn't score 20, he scored 19 points. Yeah, the guy is just super duper consistent. Happens to be on a team that also has an awful, awful defense. And it just always seems like the Chargers are at the end of the game trying to close out a game, trying to win a game. They always seem to get that last possession. So Justin Herbert's always in play each and every week. Seems to be matchup proof. Let's go over my running backs that I like in addition to the two guys I already mentioned. Top of the list, Nick Chubb. This feels like that Christian McCaffrey game, right, where he's been uninjured all year long, and now he comes back, and people are going to be nervous to start him. I'm not nervous at all. Don't forget, that injured reserve tag isn't a death sentence that it was, say, a couple years ago in fantasy. Injury reserve simply means you aren't allowed to play for what I believe is about six weeks. Even if you're ready after week four, week five, teams do it to add another roster spot to their team. So again, even if Nick Chubb was ready to go last week, they still couldn't start him by rule. He has to be out X number of weeks. Uh, he had a brace on while practicing every day this week, practice every day this week. Yesterday, he didn't even have a brace on. He's ready to go. He's 100%. Him and Aaron Jones are my absolute two favorite smash running backs of the week. Uh, Miles Sanders as well, $6,400. Same type of scenario. Boston Scott had a great game against the Giants a couple weeks ago. Miles Sanders is leaps and bounds better than Boston Scott. So expect Miles Sanders to have a big game. If you are very bullish on that Philly Giants game, I think Sanders is the way to go. I think Sanders absolutely makes sense. Antonio Gibson against Detroit. Detroit is the best team in the NFL right now to attack on the ground. We see it each and every week. Antonio Gibson no longer has that injury tag as well, which is very important. It almost was a GD, uh, J.D. McKissick week. Still might be, to be honest. But uh, Antonio Gibson, $5,600. Love his price tag. Alex Smith should and probably will check down to Antonio Gibson several times this game. Leonard Fournette, smash spot against Carolina. I feel like we've said this before. That's right. We did. It. Week two, week three, I believe. Uh, Ronald Jones seems to get the start, and that's about it. About maybe halfway through the first quarter, they just kind of take him off the field, and it's the Leonard Fournette show. So I like Leonard Fournette. Also, he clearly is the pass catching back. I fully expect Tampa to just destroy Carolina this week. So I like, I like Leonard Fournette a lot. I think in DraftKings settings, Fournette absolutely makes sense. Again, attacking Carolina every week is just a recipe that really doesn't let us down. DJ Dallas, again, three weeks in a row. He's made our video. The guy refuses to leave. Uh, Chris Carson, not practicing all week long, looking doubtful for this weekend. And for whatever reason, Carlos Hyde is attached to Chris Carson's hip because when Chris Carson doesn't play, Carlos Hyde doesn't play for reasons I don't know why. So DJ Dallas, uh, like him for $5,100. Again, Whoever the starting running back is for Seattle has value. Do I think the Seattle Rams game is going to be low scoring? I do. And there's a reason why I didn't have the quarterbacks in my top five slate. Historically, these teams play close games. That being said, any starting running back for Seattle holds value. So I like DJ Dallas for $5,100. My favorite receivers of the week, Devonta Adams. I mean, not much analysis I need to give you on this one. The guy is just the best receiver in football period. He reminds me so much about Mike, Michael Thomas last year, how regardless of his price, you just put him in there and you start him and you you watch him just catch his eight balls, his 11 balls, touchdown or two. He is Aaron Rodgers' absolute favorite target. Goes without saying. And oh, by the way, they're at home, check mark, against Jacksonville, check mark. And, and this is just going to be a blowout scenario. DeAndre Hopkins, maybe the best pure talented receiver in football right now. Uh, again, we love this Arizona-Buffalo game. Going him and Diggs in the same lineup is very expensive, but I think it's something you can pull off given the cheap uh, plays of the week, which I'll go over later. So love Hopkins, love Diggs this week. Expect tons of catches. Expect this to be a firework game. Underneath that, I got Will Fuller. Again, we talked about how Deshaun Watson's my favorite quarterback to stack this week. Going Fuller and Brandon Cooks is a very inexpensive option compared to probably what it should be. 
Um, great matchup against Cleveland. Again, monitor the weather. Make sure that is a good game to attack. Robert Woods, again, again, I talked about DJ Dallas. I do expect this to be a low-scoring game, but Bob Woods with Cooper Cup kind of banged up. It looks like he has two injury designations. Robert Woods should be getting a high-volume target game and uh, would not surprise me at all if the guy had 10 catches at the end of this game. Seattle's been a great team to attack all year long. Um, next on my list, my next five receivers, Travis Fulgham had a great game against the Giants uh, a couple weeks ago. He is just a monster of a human, and uh, I fully expect Carson Wentz to attack Giants in the air through Travis Fulgham. Again, he had a great game. We're seeing a lot of repeat games, and we've got to take advantage of the research we already saw, the game, the game footage we already saw to predict what we're going to see in the second game. Chris Godwin, maybe my favorite sneaky play of the week here. Carolina has been a team we love to attack on the ground, but also in the air. And I know Godwin only was catching the ball with nine fingers last week, but I expect him to have a big game this week. Uh, again, very similar to Robert Woods. Expect a high volume game. I don't think Tom Brady's going to force feed Antonio Brown like he did last week. I think he kind of saw what he needed to do. I think Tampa's going to destroy Carolina, to be honest. I, I fully expect Godwin. To be the chain mover for this for Tom Brady this week, I think he's a very, very sneaky, sneaky play with touchdown upside. Brandon Ayuk, another sneaky guy. Hey, last time San Fran and New Orleans played in the game, I think they combined for like over 80 points. So this game could be a monster, monster game. And it really doesn't cost you a lot of money to attack this game besides Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara. I think there's a lot of cheap ways you can attack this San Fran New Orleans game. And um, I, I expect fireworks in this game, absolutely. Drew Brees, oddly enough, might be the only quarterback on the slate this week that you can roll out naked. You can roll out just Drew Brees and that's it. You don't need to necessarily stack him because he truly does attack every position on the field. Christian Kirk under there, again, to, and Brandon Cooks to play off of our Kyler Murray and Deshaun Watson lineups. To me, just makes sense. Kirk has had 20-plus points in all three of his last games. Brandon Cooks seems to be the more consistent guy, ironically, because this guy usually was a boom or bust play every week. But he's getting the receptions. He's getting the targets, like Brandon Cooks this week as well. I think it totally makes sense to go Deshaun Watson and Will Fuller. Actually, probably is my favorite uh, stack of the week. Uh, let's go tight ends this week. Uh, tight ends is going to be tough this week. There's no one that really leaps off the page. I think the safest play of the week is Noah Fant at 4,900. Um, with Albert O out and uh, Noah Fant really being the chain mover for the uh, for the Broncos, I expect Noah Fant to be a ste get a steady workflow this week. Evan Ingram, love his matchup against Philly. Um, Philly has been a team we target all year long tight end-wise. Um, and Ingram's been getting more and more targets each and every week as well. So love Ingram. Probably the Noah Fant and Ingram are probably my two favorite, the safest plays of the week. Underneath that, Eric Ebron really been the red zone guy since he's been a great team to attack all year long at the tight end position as well. So I like Eric Ebron uh, with Big Ben kind of, you know, doing all the underneath stuff to Eric Ebron. Makes sense to me. Dallas Goddard, 4,200, the cheapest of all four of these guys. Philly runs through the tight end. They, that's how they play football for the past three to four years. With no Zach Ertz, uh, I fully expect Dallas Goddard to have a good game. Again, I do like the Giants' defense this game. Wentz will make mistakes, but Goddard should and could still get his workload. He didn't a couple weeks ago, which was frustrating to see. Uh, but I expect Goddard to kind of have a nice bounce-back game this week against the Giants. Uh, let's go over our tight ends, excuse me, our defenses this week that we like. We already talked about the Giants. If you're going to pay up, I like Eagles, I guess. I mean, Danny Dimes, I say I guess. And, you know, the, the reason being is I just hate paying up for defense. It rarely pays off. But this was the one that kind of made sense to me. Danny Dimes makes a lot of mistakes. Philly do, do, you know, get turnovers. They produce turnovers. So I like the Eagles this week a lot against uh, the Giants if you had to pay up. I think it's a lot smarter to pay down, though, like the Lions and the Raiders this week. Again, my recipe for DSTs every single week is you go with the cheapest home defense that doesn't have an awful matchup. Lions against uh, an Alex Smith-led Washington uh, Potatoes and uh, the Raiders at home against Drew Locke. To me, that makes sense. Those are, that's, those are two that I want to attack. Uh, let's look at the bargain bin this week. I talked about earlier about plays we're going to want to use that are under that 5k price tag these are guys we're really going to want to focus on 
Running back wise, not a whole lot this week. Not a whole lot. Philip Lindsay uh, for five thousand. Duke Johnson for five thousand. Doesn't like David Johnson's going to play. My, Melvin Gordon is playing, folks. Don't don't get it twisted. But Philip Lindsay seems to be the more explosive player of the backfield right now. So I like him for five k. J D McKissick. We talked about Antonio Gibson earlier. J D McKissick has been getting a ton of receptions. Uh, again, Detroit lets it both lets it up both on the ground and receptions to running backs this year. And fourth in the list, I have the Chargers running back with a whole bunch of question marks because I don't know who the guy's going to be right now. Could be Josh Kelly. Could be Pope. Could be, oh, I hate to say it, Kalen Balaj. Really? Ugh. I just could, I couldn't write Kalen Balaj's name down. That's kind of why I did that. If there's a guy you're completely bullish on, we get more information on who the lead guy is going to be. That's the guy I want. Right now, I just don't know who it is going to be. And until we get more information, that's, I would just kind of keep it a question mark. Maybe it's just an avoid for you too. Maybe that maybe is the more reasonable option. Red receivers, Devonta Parker for 5K. No Preston Williams. I like Devonta Parker for 5K. Running it back against the Chargers. Again, Chargers games have all year long have been back and forth, so that makes sense. Tim Patrick, $4,900 against the Raiders. Um, I expect you Locke to have to rely on uh, Noah Fant, Tim Patrick. And don't forget, Jerry Judy really hasn't had a monster game until last week. So Tim Patrick seems to be the wide receiver one on that team. Curtis Samuel, $4,900 with Christian McCaffrey out. Samuel could be more of that Swiss Army Knife type of player and get more and more usage. Always like him in play. Again, Manuel Sanders, I talked a little bit briefly about that San Fran Saints game. $4,800, I think this is a very inexpensive player to use to attack this game. Uh, Rashad Higgins, Hollywood Higgins, $4,600 this week. Again, I fully expect Houston Cleveland to be a shootout, so Higgins makes sense with no ODB playing. Danny Amendola had a great game last week, a lot of receptions. Kenny Galladay not playing. Danny Amendola has to be in play. Maybe my favorite cheap receiver play of the week is right here. Josh Reynolds, $3,500. This is a guy I circled at the very beginning of the week when I heard about Cooper Cup's injury. Josh Reynolds just makes sense. The guy has had uh, eight targets in his back-to-back -back games, has had uh, eight or more points in his last three games. I like Josh Reynolds a lot for $3,500. The matchup makes sense. Jared Goff is home, and he's just getting used more and more each week. David Moore, $3,300. Again, you know my theory on choosing cheap receivers. I like choosing the third receiver on ex uh, explosive offense, and Seattle is one of those teams. David Moore could just get some open coverage and get that deep bomb look like he did last week. And then Chris Conley, three thousand dollars. He had eight thousand. He had excuse me. He had eight targets last week uh, with the Jaguars' new quarterback in the back. It's not like we've never seen this story before, where backup quarterbacks tend to throw to the second team receivers, and Chris Conley is not one of the top two receivers on that team. So three K Chris Conley got. Um, Eight targets last week, caught seven of them. I like him for 3K, running it back against the Packers this week. Tight ends this week. Tight ends is really tough, but if you're going to pay down, these are the guys I want to go with. Austin Hooper looks like he's back. He got his appendix taken out uh, just three weeks ago. Shocked he's even on the field, but $3,900. Ross Dwelly, again, it looks like he, I thought it was going to be Jordan Reed, but it looks like Ross Dwelly is the guy there in San Fran. And just like Philly, Whoever the tight end is has value. So I like Ross Dillick for $3,800. Logan Thomas, $3,600. Uh, Alex Smith is going to rely on the underneath stuff, and Logan Thomas should be one of the beneficiaries there. Tyler Croft, Drew Sample. Ugh, I mean, I don't love these plays, but their matchup makes sense. Tyler Croft, 3K. Uh, you know, it, it should be a back-and-forth game. Cardinals has been a team we've targeted in the past at the tight end position, but... Again, this is really, if you have no other options at tight end, I would go Tyler Croft for 3K. And then Drew Sample. Uh, Pittsburgh, I think, is going to just pressure uh, Burrow all game long, and he's going to need to rely on some underneath stuff. So Drew Sample for $2,700, if you absolutely need it, I think makes sense. And again, as you see in the bottom left, monitor the weather. Very important. Make sure these games aren't down uh, downpours and just absolutely gross games because if that's the case you're going to want to avoid it and if that is the case again i will let you know and i will type it in uh the fantasy life facebook page game of what to avoid all right let's talk game stacks folks these are my three game stacks that i'm um, examples some i may use some i may not use 
Um, but I just kind of show you exactly my format and how I attack games this week. We'll go with my third, second, and favorite of the week. Start with number three. This is my third favorite stack. This is a Justin Herbert stack. Uh, they got Miami this week. I got Justin Herbert, Aaron Jones, who is my favorite play of the week, Leonard Fournette. We talked about him earlier. Keenan Allen, again, Herbert, Keenan Allen are attached at the hip here. Devonta Parker, again, no Preston Williams. Expect Parker to kind of be the main beneficiary there. Uh, Manny Sanders, we talked about him earlier. Very sneaky play for $4,800. Eric Ebron, $4,400 here. Uh, again, since he has been awful against the tight end all year long. Nick Chubb, my second favorite running back of the week there with the Giants DST. This is a zeroed out lineup. I like this one a lot. Um, I definitely wish I had some pieces of that Cardinals Buffalo game because I do want to attack that game as well. Um, but it just wasn't in the cards in this particular one. Um, perhaps I could turn Manny Sanders into uh, Christian Kirk if I lower other pieces. But again, this is just an example of how I would attack this particular slate. Uh, let's look at another one. Again, that's my Justin Herbert stack. This is my Josh Allen stack. This one I like a lot. This one has a lot of potential. Um, Josh Allen at quarterback, Aaron Jones, Mike Davis, uh, Stefan Diggs, Nuke, and Christian Kirk. Again, very expensive to go all three of those receivers, but I think it makes sense because you can find cheap plays, and those cheap plays being Dallas Goddard for 42, Josh Reynolds for 35, and the Giants DST for 27. So, again, that with Mike Davis. This is a great example of how Mike Davis really does help out your lineups. It really does show you how important it is to get a 4k guy like mike davis to make a lineup like this possible so this is my josh allen lineup and my favorite lineup of the week my favorite stack of the week i should say is my deshaun watson lineup we got deshaun this is a zeroed out lineup deshaun watson nick chubb aaron jones uh three of my absolute favorite plays of this week again i got cooks and fuller just like we did last week running it back Chris Conley, my 3K receiver that I talked about earlier. Uh, he got a lot of targets last week. Expect him to get targets this week. Uh, Dallas Goddard there, $4,200. Keenan Allen, uh, the most consistent receiver in football right now. And the Lions DST at home against Washington. I like this lineup a lot. Most likely this will be one I use. Uh, you are more than welcome to take this lineup and use it for yourself. Uh, again, our Deshaun Watson lineup last week was, was our best lineup. So... Uh, That'd be awesome if someone just used one of our lineups and won a crap ton of money. That'd be great. Send those screenshots too, folks. If you win, if you win, I want to see the screenshots. I want to see uh, if you took my advice and if it led to you money. I want to, you know, if I let you down, feel free to let me down too. Guys, awesome show this week. Let's see if we can get another uh, four-digit score for the third week in a row. That would just be so cool to me. One last time to you folks, happy belated Veterans Day to all the former and active military out there. Thank you so much for your service. I can't thank you enough. We are very, we are all very thankful for the work you have done and continue to do for our country. Stay on top of the weather, folks. Stay on top. There's going to be a lot of things you're going to need to monitor. Winds, rain, all that stuff. Injuries, inactives. I'm going to try my hardest to post it all Sunday morning. So if you have any lineup questions, folks, trade questions, I know those deadlines are coming up. Send them my way. Until then, folks, my name's AC. You guys and gals have a tremendous week. Good luck out there on the Fantasy Gridiron. Take care, y'all.